For lecture 18, we're going to start with an introduction to states of matter. I'm sure you've known the states of matter probably since middle school science. Solids have a fixed shape and fixed position. Liquids have variable shape and some molecular movement. And gases have variable shape and volume and very fast molecular movement. The state of matter has a dramatic effect on the outcome. No, this is not anyone I know. I did spend time in Wisconsin, and people do like to ice fish there. It's important to make sure the state of matter of the water is solid. We're going to defer most discussion of solid properties to Chapter 8. We will briefly cover some liquid properties. Now that you're aware of intermolecular forces, the word cohesive force is used to define the force between like molecules in liquids that result in viscosity and surface tension. Adhesive forces are the attractive or repulsive forces between unlike molecules that result in something called a meniscus. Viscosity is defined as the resistance of liquids to flow. I tend to think of it like a tangling issue. People with short hair get the comb through very easily. People with long hair, sometimes there's a tangle and it's hard to get the comb through the hair. So a low viscosity material that pours easily might be vinegar, which is composed of tiny molecules of water and acetic acid. You generally don't struggle to get the vinegar out of the bottle. A high viscosity material might be something like corn syrup, which is a long chain of sugar molecules. Sometimes it's hard to get the corn syrup out of the bottle because the large molecules have a resistance to flow. Another property of water is surface tension. That is the energy required to increase the surface area of a liquid. I tend to think of this as a glue issue. Things that have low surface tension don't have much attraction between the molecules. In the previous lecture, we discussed hydrogen bonding and that acetone molecules could not hydrogen bond to each other. So they have only dispersion and dipole forces for their attraction. Because of that, when you place a drop of acetone on a surface, it will spread out some. Water, on the other hand, has great attraction to other water molecules, so it has what is called high surface tension. The same amount of water on the same surface might result in less spreading because water beads up as the water molecules are attracted to each other. So that's why I tend to think of surface tension as a glue issue. Surface tension can result in some interesting pictures, such as spiders walking on water or a great amount of water on top of a penny. A meniscus is due to adhesive and cohesive forces between a liquid and the surface of the glass. First, I need to show you what glass looks like. Glass is made of silicon dioxide but there also tends to be some anion and cation characteristic to the surface of glass due to the loss of hydrogen and gain of a sodium one plus ion. Glass can be a highly charged surface. Meniscuses come in two forms, those that curve downward and those that curve upward. I have two glass cylinders here, one has water with dye in it, the other has mercury. You notice the meniscuses are different. The downward curving meniscus is due to strong adhesive forces between the water, which is a very polar molecule, and the glass, which has a highly charged surface. This is the result of the water molecules and the glass being attractive to one another. Mercury and glass, however, have weak adhesive forces. The mercury is very nonpolar, non-charged, and the glass is highly charged. So this results in an upward curving meniscus. 
The downward curving meniscus is called a concave meniscus, and I hope you've already seen this in lab and recognized to read from the bottom of the meniscus. An upward curving meniscus is known as a convex meniscus.